JJ Jinx! Truck Stop Nice! JJ Jinx! Truck Stop Dives! Good evening, everybody. So I have a new knife, and it's got a story to it. Two stories, actually. The first story is how I came to get it. I placed an order for it uh, three weeks ago now, and it never showed up. The day came that it was supposed to be shipped. The little shipping status app from Amazon said, it's out for delivery. And I was like, cool. And it just never showed up. And so after a few more days, the status changed to um, uh, the package is late, the package is delayed. And then a few days after that, it says, your package may have been lost. Uh, click here to get a refund. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. I'm not really an impatient person. I can reorder it. And then it was like, oh, just wait a few more days, and then you can get a refund. A few more days went by, and I was like, well, you know what? It says I might still get it, so I'll wait a few more days. Today, this afternoon, I got a refund, and I placed a new order. And then I got home, and the knife's in my freaking mailbox. <laughs> so I guess I'm getting this one for free. Uh, and that's okay, because the one I ordered is a little bit different, so it's not going to be two of the same thing. That's the first story. The second story is I ordered a knife called the Higo no Kami. Um, it's a Japanese knife, if that wasn't obvious from the packaging, and it has a really cool history behind it. Oh, on the inside there's this little slip of paper. It's like a, I'm guessing this is the story? Oh, it's like built in. Oh. Well, I don't read Japanese, but if you do, I don't know if I'm even like holding that correctly, I guess. It would be like this. Hmm. Anyway, so this knife was designed in the late 1800s by people who made samurai swords because samurai weren't really a thing anymore. There were some cultural changes going on in Japan. And basically, um, they were like, we need to come up with some new product. Let's make a knife, a little tiny samurai sword, I guess. And so they did, and they called it the Higo no Kami, um, which stands for Lord of Higo, I believe. Yes, it does. I'm reading it off of Wikipedia because I can't memorize this crap. Anyway, 1896 was when the first one was made, and... Um, then it was it was really popular. It was sort of considered the working man's knife. Let me just show it to you so you have something to look at. And it was immensely popular. It was inexpensive. Basically, everyone wanted one of these. Everyone had one. And uh, it's a very simple design. I'll talk more about that after I tell the story. And so what ended up happening was, a, because this is just the way that Japanese do things, uh, in order to manufacture these, a guild was formed. And so there were people in the guild manufacturing these, um, and there was, uh, you know, what one of the guild members had a kid, and they trained the kid on how to make these, and then that kid had a kid, and so on and so forth. And for five generations, um, basically, one family made these knives, and there are copies. People, other manufacturers make knives just like this, but they're not allowed to call it the Higo no Kami. It might say Higo knife or Higo no Kami style, but only the knives made from that guild can be called the Higo no Kami. And they've been, they're using the same methods that they have ever since the first one was made. Um, they have pretty primitive looking clay forges for the steel. Uh, they have a, one riveting machine to rivet the pivot. And essentially, um, that that's it. It's like one person making these things. And that is still the case to this day. The person remaining, his name is... Here it is. His name is 
Negeo Kanikoma. He's 84 years old, he has no children, and he has not taken on any apprentices. So when he retires or passes away, you can't get these anymore. That's it. Um, so I read all of that, and I thought that was just super cool, and I kind of wanted one. And so I got an official one from uh, the, 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 the Forge, which you can go to their website. Uh, they have an Amazon storefront. There's some photos on their website. It shows this guy like grinding a blade and, and using their single rivet machine. Um, they got some photos of the older uh, guild masters. And I uh, just kind of wanted one of these while you could still get them. And one of the nice things is that they're actually really inexpensive. So for this one, which is sort of a black metal for the handle, uh, I only paid $11. Well, technically I paid nothing, but I would have paid only $11 for it. Now, the more traditional styles to have a, a brass colored, well, brass handle. Um, so that's the one that I actually ordered uh, just so I could sort of have the original design. And um, I figured, well, why not have this one too then? Because I'm going to have both. And the stamp is the name of the pe person who made it. Uh, and then also the, you know, Higo no Kami. I don't know the characters exactly. And uh, so that's the story. And the way the knife is constructed, it's really simple. It's a single folded piece of metal that form the handle. Um, it's a slip joint that is connected at this pivot. So you got this like sort of bite mark looking thing in the handle. And what you do is you grab the blade and oh, I can't grab it. Oh, or you can or you can use a little flipper handle. <laughs> um, and then the knife is basically held into place on this little tab. And that, that's pretty much it. Uh, the steel of the blade is called blue paper steel. And the interesting thing about it, I don't know why they call it that, but the interesting thing about it is apparently the steel that they use for the spine is different from the steel that they use for the edge. And so um, it's, it's like a bifurcated steel design. Now, I don't really see it. I don't really see a dividing line. Uh, maybe. Maybe they're at the bottom. I don't know. But that was kind of a neat uh, detail. Was they, I guess they kind of recognize it's really bad steel, except for let's let's just put good steel for the edge. And you can get it really, really sharp. It's basically carbon steel, so it will rust. Um, it's, it's made to be used and abused and thrown away. Another name for these is called is a penny knife. Um, it's a worker's knife. It's, it's not made for royalty. It's made for, you know, people in the fields, people in the mills. And so they were they're they're still to this day immensely popular. You can get them with different grades of steel, uh, different handle materials. But uh, if you want the original, it's going to have the original materials, original craftsmanship, and um, and uh, you're running out of time, I guess, <laughs> unless the guy decides at the last minute uh, to take on an apprentice. But he's not really planning to, so. Uh, one of the big flaws in this knife that people are quick to point out who review these, I guess, is that there's nothing really stopping the blade from hitting the bottom of the handle. So if you put a nice sharp edge on it, you just got to be careful you don't clamp down on it too hard. And I would also be weary about putting it in my pocket because it's like, what's to stop something from catching on this little flipper tab, which there is a word for it. I just can't remember I can't remember my Higo no Kami anatomy uh, from catching on something. And then you reach down into your pocket and poke yourself or slice your hand open. Uh, chikiri. That's the name of this thing. It's called a Chikiri lever. And they make them in a couple of different sizes. This is size number seven or medium. Um, I don't know what the stamp on the blade means exactly. Because this is my first time looking at this. I literally just took it out of the box. Because I wasn't expecting to get it. Uh, but now that I do have it, I think it's pretty cool. And when you, when you put the historical context into this thing. And you realize like this is, this is super traditional. And uh, I just like the idea that just one guy makes it. Uh, you can see some of the... <laughs> 
some of the carbon is rubbing off on my finger. I mean, this is this is old school forging in a, in the modern day. I don't know if it always had a lanyard hole. <laughs> I doubt it. Um, and you know, th these are folded from one piece, which means that these holes had to have been drilled on either side before it was folded. Actually, I guess it would make more sense if they drilled it after. I don't know. Um, but I guess yeah, they have lanyard holds now. I guess there there are some modernizations. Anyway, um, when I get the other one, I might show it off, but it looks exactly the same. It's just traditional colors, brass. And that is the story of the Higo no Kami. So if you ever see a knife in this style, uh, just got to bear in mind, it might not be the real deal. You got to get it from the Amazon storefront from the factory, which is like a shed made out of corrugated metal. Uh, you can look at pictures of it on the website. And um, if you do decide to pick one up, get them while they last. This has been JJ Jinx Truck Stop Knives!